Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all the infinite praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Makakwadash. Double honor to those apostles, the great most of every world, peace and blessings, good luck to Israel, Shalom, and above all. Back at it when the last student spirit of power will be how Bashim El Shai, Lord willing, this video is edifying. And without further ado, I want to get right into it through the spirit, man. All right. And pretty much, you know, the exhortation today is uh, you got to be ready to die for this thing, man. All right. You got to be ready to die for this truth, man. Okay. And if you feel like you can confidently say within yourself that you're ready to die for Yahweh Bashim El Shai, then that's great. All right. Keep pushing. You know, make that, uh, may Yahweh Bashim El Shai increase that confidence. You know, but if you feel like you're not ready, all right, then, you know, hey, you got to uh, pray to the Lord, go on a fast, you know, do some real soul searching, man, and understand what you signed up for, so to speak, because this is what comes with the job. You know, um, Yahweh Shai said that if you want to be his disciple, all right, then you got to take up your cross and walk with him, man. All right. And you got to understand what it, what happened when Yahweh Shai took up that cross, man. He got put on that cross and he got put to death on that cross, man, so you got to be ready to die, too, okay, spiritually and literally, man, okay, because, you know, we don't live unto ourselves, we live unto Yahweh Shai, all right, and the thing is, the Lord, he's going to be with us, man, all right, the same way the Lord is going to be with you while you're alive, same way the Lord is going to be with you while you die, this is Psalms 48 and 14, this is as, for this, the most high, for this, the most high is our power forever and ever, he will be our guide even unto death, man. Yeah, and the Lord said he's going to guide us, man. All right? Because we're coming into some uh, evil tribulations, evil times. All right? And a lot of strange calamities and judgments is about to be going out here, man. All right? And you see how, you know, the MOTB narrative is being pushed. All right? The Mark of the Beast. You see how they're coming down with the chip. Uh, there was a... A news clip from RT News and various other news. Um, and, and I see one other news uh, source saying how pretty much, um, you know, um, basically saying like those uh, that the Pentagon is, is coming up with technology, so to speak, a chip to track if you have that C19. All right. Now, you know. We understand that, you know, the Esau is going to try to paint it like, you know, he's he's got your best interest at heart. He's trying to help you. You know, he's trying to help protect you from that from that same thing that he created in the lab. But nonetheless, you know, it's uh, all a part of the agenda. But this has to happen to fulfill biblical prophecy. All right. This is Second Ezra 16 and verse um, 68. It says, for behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols. All right, and what's that talking about? That's talking about, um, you know, them taking away certain certain brothers, sisters. All right, Israelites as a whole. Right, whether you're in the truth or not, throwing them into FEMA camps. Okay, it says and they shall feed you with things offered unto idols, being idle. All right, what's those things offered unto idols, man? All right, that chip and the MOTB, man. Okay, which is uh. Which that idol, so to speak, will be the image of the beast, which is this, which is this Roman-like system, man. This this one-world agenda. All right. And uh, it says right there, it says, and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and reproach and trodden underfoot. Yeah. So all of our people who want to sell out to Esau, you want to uh, consent unto his wickedness. Okay, you're gonna be had in derision. All right, Esau is gonna turn his back on you, man. And you're already seeing a taste of that now. A lot of people who got the jab, guess what? They're the main carriers of the C-19. Isn't that funny? All right. And a lot of people who got the jab, all right, they're, they are um, still susceptible to catching different viruses, man. More than people who didn't take it. So it goes to show you those that consent to them shall be had in derision for real, for real, man. All right. And we're seeing that already. So how much more in that time when Esau is plainly throwing it in your face that, you know, he's setting up his enterprise, you know, and he doesn't care how you feel. If you don't like it, you can get put to death. How much more then? Okay, because right now Esau, he's, he's being a serpent about it still. You know, he's showing you his hand, but he's still being a serpent about it. But the time's going to come where he's just going to reveal his horns, man. All right. 
Verse 70 says, For there shall be in every place in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. A great insurrection meaning an uprising of the government. All right. Esau is going to roll with that martial law. And he's going to come down with that great wrath, man, upon all of Israel, whether you believe in the truth or not. There shall be like madmen sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Yeah. And that's even going to apply to certain members of the elect, man. Okay. It says, For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Yeah. When they're going door to door, Snatching people out of their homes, throwing them into them FEMA camps, concentration camps, so on and so forth. Verse 17 says, Then shall they be known who are my chosen. They shall be tried as gold in the fire. Yeah, that's going to be that trial process, man. All right. It says, Hear all ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Okay. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh Bashmashah is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord, power, man. Yeah, so the Lord said, look, don't be afraid. I'm your guide, all right? But like we read back in Psalms, the Lord is our guide even unto death, man. So you got to be willing to die for this thing. He'll be there to, rock, to walk with you throughout the whole process, man. Yahweh Shemesh will never forsake us. Just because you're, you're going to die doesn't mean the Lord is forsaking you, man. All right, if anything, that means that the Lord is, is drawing you near to him even closer because, you know, those who die on this side, Prior to Yahweh Shai coming back, they're going to be the first ones to get raised up when Yahweh Shai comes back. And when you go into the spirit world, you know, hey, all your labors and your works do follow you, man. Let me, let me read this real quick. But it depends on if you die in the spirit of Yahweh Shai, okay? Because if not, if you die because you're a wicked doer, then hey, you ain't really got much hope, man. You know, you're going to wake up and you're going to have your head down in the kingdom. Chapter 14, verse 13. It says, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, they have the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them, man. Yeah. Okay. It's second like Ezra 16. And that's, and that's the beauty of serving the Lord. Everything else that you endeavor yourself in, you know, different endeavors and labors that you endeavor yourself in for this world, you can't take it with you when you die. But all the work that you put in for Yahweh Shai, that will follow you in the spirit realm. You see? That's the beauty of serving the Lord. Okay? It says, And the God of them who keep my commandments and priests say of the Lord power, let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves, man. Yeah, you don't want your sins and your iniquities to be the reason why you get destroyed, man. All right? You know, and if you, and if you are down and out about your sins, I sure should say, my son, has thou sinned, do so no more, but ask pardon for thy former sins, man. All right? You know, make thy prayer with before the Most High and what? And offend less, man. All right? Those are two different scriptures, all right, in the Apocrypha. Okay? But nonetheless, um, like I said, man, you got to be ready to die for this thing, man. Okay? Because that is what comes with the job. Now, we hope that Yahweh Shemeshai, you know, doesn't put us to death in Babylon. We hope not, but at the end of the day, man, we died anyways, man. And really, if you do die during those times, that's really a mercy kill, man. Okay, because you don't have to go through the tribulations and the evil times of Jacob Trouble. This is Sirach Ecclesiastes 4 and 28. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee, man. Yeah, you got to be ready to die, man. You got to be ready to fight for this truth unto death, man. And the Lord's going to fight for it, man. He's going to help us, man. All right? He's going to give us the courageous spirit to endure. And like I said, if you do die in Jacob's trouble, that's really a mercy kill, man. This is a Isaiah 51, it's like Isaiah 57 and 1. The righteous perisheth and no man lay it at the heart, and merciful men are taken away. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come, man. Yeah, evil meaning what? Bad times, man. All right, a lot of people, they don't consider that. All right, it says, he shall enter into peace, they shall rest. In their beds, each one walking in his uprightness, man. All right? Yeah. Talking about in the spirit room. Because there's order in the spirit room. This is within the zone in three and one. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of Yahweh Bashmashai, and there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and their departure is taken from misery. Yeah, getting your head chopped off for this thing. You know, in the sight of the unwise, it, it, it looks like you went out without honor, so to speak. But you died for an integrity, for, an, you know, integrity reasons. Okay, and, and you know, for your uprightness for Yahweh Shah. It says, and they're going from us to be utter destruction, 
but they are in peace. Yeah, because it's in the spirit realm is peace, man. But though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. That's right, because they're going to get raised back up with that new body, man. They're going to be a part of the first fruits of them that slept under Yahweh's shot. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded for Yahweh Bashem shall have proved them and found them worthy for himself. As the gold in the furnace have you tried them and received them as a burnt offering. Yeah, our life is like a sacrifice to the Lord anyways, man. So we want to be that sweet savior unto the Lord, that burnt offering, man. But the thing is, you know, the Lord, he's not going to take up offering that has blemishes, man. Uh, when you come into this thing, you got to be ready to put off. You got to be ready to be a perfect sacrifice, man. And, and sometimes that may lead unto you literally dying, okay, and not just spiritually dying, okay? Whatever the Lord has written for your life. But if, if that's our will, you know, hey, Yahweh Bashem is going to give us the spirit to go through it. First Corinthians 10 and 13 says he doesn't tempt us above what we are able. <laughs> All right. It says, um, and in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble, man. Yeah, meaning when we come back with the visitation with Yahweh Shah, we're going to get them new bodies, man. All right. The spiritual powers will be fast running like sparks, man. You know, to and fro. It says, and they shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people. Yeah, those are the, those are the, we're going to reap the fruits. We're going to reap, reap the fruits of our labor. All right. And that's a part of that, having dominion over the nations, man. It says, and, the Lord, and their Lord, Yahweh Shai, and the Most High, of course, shall reign forever. All right. It says, and they that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his light. Yeah, and that love is the love of Yahweh Bashem Shai, which is keeping his commandments, man, and keeping the faith. Okay. That's true love, according to the Bible. All right. But the Lord said that he's, he's going to be with us, man. We're going to be in peace, man. So don't be afraid, man. Hey, the scriptures say what? Fear not the sentence of death. The scriptures say that, man. All right, let me get that real quick. Fear not. And think about it, man. When you're going through Jacob's trouble, man, you know, I ain't saying brothers going to be suffering through Jacob's trouble like like an average two-third, but, you know, hey, dying really would be like like a, a, a mercy cure in them times, man. This is uh, Ecclesiastes or Sirach, chapter 4, D41 and 3. Fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after thee, for this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. Yeah. Don't be afraid to die, man. Because really, like the Apostle Paul said, to die is gain. Okay? You know, you ain't you ain't missing out on much. Okay? And the thing is, that was the that was the trait about the elect. The elect, all the true men of the Lord, they have always been ready to die for you for Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Like Peter said, Lord. I will follow you unto prison and even unto death. Roughly paraphrasing, man. You got to come in that same spirit. That's the house of David right there, man. Peter is David in the reincarnation. Hey, the house of David come in that same spirit, man. This is Revelation chapter 12, starting at verse 11. It says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death, man. Yeah. The elect love not their lives unto the death, man. Okay? Because we don't, we, we, we're not living right now, man. Okay? We're just existing in this world, man. This, is, this isn't this is our present life anyways, man. So it's better to die with honor, all right, rather than uh, um, living living, and, and compromising our integrity to Yahweh Bachemel Shai. This is Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And it says, and I saw thrones, man. Who sits on thrones, man? Kings, man. Kings sit on thrones, man. Okay? They're going to be crowned, man, with that everlasting glory, man, for their sacrifice that they did on this side, man. You got to think about it, man. You, if you're willing to die for Yahweh Shemel Shai on this side, you have a crown of everlasting glory laid up for you, man. How powerful is that, man? Okay? How powerful is that? All right? But if you fold, okay, because you want to live a little longer in a kingdom that's going to be destroyed anyways, all right, guess what? You're going to have... Everlasting shame and contempt, man. Now, which one seems like a better trade, so to speak? This is Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded with the witness of Yahweh Shah and the, for the word of the Most High, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads. 
All right, it says on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Mashiach a thousand years. And you got to understand, it says they didn't worship the beast, his image, his mark, and you take his mark, so on and so forth. What is that going to show you? That they love not their lives until the death, man. Because if you love your life, ultimately, you see Esau coming down with that great wrath. You love your life so much, hey, you're going you're gonna to be willing to succumb to this one world agenda. You're going to be willing to fold for that, for that chip because you love your life too much. You got to hate your life in this thing, man. Not saying that, you know, you suicidal and shit, but, you know, you, you just understand that this is the end all be all. You're not happy with the way this world is. That's all that really, that's all that really comes down to, you know? All right. And then the elect gonna come in that spirit, man. This is Revelation 6 and uh, in verse 9. It says, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of the Most High and for the testimony which they held, man. All right. Yeah. Okay. So certain men, you know, you're going to be slain for this testimony, man. Ain't nothing new. This has happened in the past. But the thing is, well, same way in the past, same way now. The Lord is going to be with them, man. And the Lord is going to bless them for their labors. Okay. Let's get this uh, last one. I'm going to write this off. This is Isaiah 27. In verse 13, it says, It shall come to pass in that, in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown. All right, that great trumpet, all right, he's referring to when Yahushua comes back with the fathership and the rest of the chariots, and he's blowing that trumpet, and he raises up the elect. It says, and they shall come which are ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount of Jerusalem. Yeah, we, meaning what? Ready to perish, meaning what? They're ready to give up their lives for this thing, man. Okay, they love not their lives unto the death, like the scriptures say, man. All right, and the thing is, if you do die on this side, Guess what? You're going to be the first to get raised up again. This is 1 Thessalonians 4, starting at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh Shai will the Most High bring with him. Meaning what? They're going to die and rise again too. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Okay? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the Most High. All right. It says, and the dead in Mashiach shall rise first, man. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, man. Yeah. Okay. And like Scripture say, really, there is no such thing as death. The Lord created not death, man. All right. This is John 11 and 25. I'll start at verse um, 25. It says, Yahweh I said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Yeah, because why? You're not going to taste of that second death. All right? And your spirit is going to live on, even if you did even if you did shed, shed this mortal suit on this side prior to Yahweh I coming back and establishing his kingdom, man. All right, so with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to you. How about Shem Yahushai, by Shem Chakadash, double honors to those apostles of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel, man. All right, Shalom and a Baba Ball. Just hold firm, man. All right, hold firm, hold fast. Okay, it's going to get a little bumpy out here, man. The Lord told us it would be. It's not like he didn't warn us of these times. So you can't say that Yahweh Shem Yahushai is unjust because he did warn us these times were coming. All right. But he also did tell us that he was going to be with us, man. So you guys got to trust in that. So with that, shalom and a baba ball. Call halayim la yahal bashmel shai.